Hello, I'm Ryan with Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to do a review of the Autour Laser Master 2. Now, you might have seen some of my other videos where I go over CNC, 3D printing, and injection molding, but when it comes to laser engraving, I really don't have any experience. Can I get it to work? Do I like it? Would I recommend it? Well, let's find out. First, I wanted to start off by thanking the folks at MadeTheBest.com for contacting me and asking if I would be interested in testing this machine. They did send me this machine for free, but this is not a paid review and any opinions on the machine are mine. There is also an affiliate link in the description that helps out the channel and helps me to keep making content for you guys. So on to the machine. The box came well packed and was very simple to put together. The instructions for the build can be downloaded from the link listed on the paper that came inside the box. This will download a zip file that contains the assembly instructions as well as laser gerbil and necessary drivers. It also gives you a quick setup to getting running straight out of the gate with laser gerbil and light burn, but I haven't tried light burn yet. Light burn is a paid program whereas laser gerbil is free. I will not go over the build since the instructions are pretty good and there are other videos that do that. I will say that it took about 20 minutes for me to put the whole thing together as many of the parts are pre-assembled including most of the gantry. It only requires that you have a Phillips head screwdriver. All other assembly tools are in the box. This machine has an impressive 400 by 430 millimeter engraving area. It comes in three different power versions, 7 watt, 15 watt, and 20 watt. This does not indicate laser wattage, but power of the machine, and bigger doesn't always mean better. You really want to get the version based on what you want the machine for. If you only want to picture engrave, the smallest 7 watt, which is actually 1.6 watt laser, is a good option because it would have the finest beam and be great for details. If you want the most powerful laser, the 20 watt has a 5.5 watt laser and engraves faster and cuts deeper, but might not be the most fine. The middle of the two would be the 15 watt with a 4.5 watt laser that would have better fine engraving than the 20 watt, but less cutting ability. My particular version is this 20 watt and comes with a fixed focus laser module. I don't have to worry about turning a lens to focus the beam on the 20 watt version. The kit comes with this aluminum cylinder that you place between the laser module and the cutting piece. Once it is resting on the cylinder, you tighten the screws on the sliding block to lock the laser at its perfect focal height. The Auteur comes with a 32-bit motherboard that can engrave at an impressive 3000 millimeters per minute. I was shocked actually at how fast this machine was when it started engraving. The motherboard is on the front of the machine with a power port, USB data interface, and apparently another port for what I believe is supposed to be a yet to release offline controller. Currently the machine has to be plugged into a computer at all times or you can't use it. The Autour comes with some safety features built into the motherboard including a G sensor that turns the laser off if the machine is bumped. The laser also turns off if the USB cable is unplugged mid-cut or the machine detects the laser is not moving and shuts down the laser to prevent fires. Okay, so let's start cutting. I'm going to assume at this point you have followed the assembly instructions, added the drivers, and have laser gerbil installed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up laser gerbil. COM3 is the connection that it's connected to. The baud rate's okay. I'm gonna click this connect button. You'll hear a little sound if everything works correctly. And then if it's connected, you can start moving the laser around. Okay. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to file, open file. And I'm gonna grab something off of my desktop. So what I want to use is vectorize for this one because there's, there's no gradient to this. It's just a black and white image. Um, the filling quality is set to 10, which is, a, which is a normal quality. 
everything else looks okay. The last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this little star right here, which is gonna auto trim the image, because if you see, the image has a little bit of white around the edges, and I just wanna make sure that when I'm setting up my image size, it's taking up the entire frame. So I'm gonna hit that, and you see now it's filling the entire square. I'm gonna hit next. So, if you look here in the laser mode, M4 is dynamic power, which is for engraving, M3 is for constant power, so that would be more if you were trying to cut with this laser. And then you come up here to this little open laser and material button. My particular machine is the Orter 20 watt, and you can see that this is the actual wattage of the laser, which is 5.5. And then I'm picking a material right now, which is that solid wood coaster. So I will say solid wood, hit apply. And the other thing that I wanna do is I actually want this to be in the center of this coaster. So I'm actually pressing this center the image vertical and horizontal. So that'll put it in the center, so zero will be at the center of the image. I'm gonna hit create. Now it looks like if on this machine, if you ever go below zero, if you ever go in the negative, then it'll actually have an alarm. So what I am going to do, I'm gonna hit no. I'm gonna cancel this, cancel this. I'm gonna go up to Gerbil gerbil configuration. I'm gonna look for that dollar sign 20, which is the soft limit enable, and I'm going to disable it by placing a zero, and I'm gonna hit right, and then you can see that it has now written this new gerbil configuration to the machine. Now I'm gonna close. So I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna reload the last file since it remembers what I had there. 10, that's fine, I'm vectorizing this. I'm gonna auto trim the image. Hit next. Dynamic power again. All of these settings are the same, and hit apply. It's still centered, and I'm going to hit create. And there's my image. Now, because I want this to start in the center of the coaster, I need to make sure that the zero point is in the center of the coaster. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm gonna press this button down here to actually turn on the laser, and I'll be wearing my safety goggles at the time. And I have already put a small dot in the center of that coaster. I 3D printed this guide that will let me find the center of a circle, and I'll put a link to that STL in the description. It's really useful. So I am going to turn on the laser, and now I am going to use these uh, arrows over here and move it until it's on the dot that I put in the center with a pencil. Okay. And now that that's where I want it, I'm gonna click this button, which sets that zero point. Okay, so now if you come over here to this boundary, if you click it, it should show you the boundary of where it's gonna do the, the engraving. So that looks right. Okay, like I said, this is the very first time I'm ever gonna attempt to use this machine. Uh, again, you should wear your safety goggles when you're looking at this laser. Uh, I'm going to turn on a fan uh, that has a filter on it uh, to try to extract some of the fumes. Um, and let's see how it works. I'm going to press this run program button and we should get started.
Like I said, this was my very first time ever trying this or any other laser engraver. Probably should have tried on a scrap piece first, but hey, go big or go home. I was very happy with the results. I might have to play with the strength a little bit based on how deep the engraving went, but it's common to have to tweak the settings based on the material you are cutting into. It was a great start. The next thing I wanted to try was to cut something. This machine says it can cut 3 mm thick plywood. I didn't have any, but I did have this 4.4 mm thick plywood circle I picked up from the dollar store for about 50 cents. I ran it for three passes instead of two, and it cut almost all the way through the 4.4 millimeters. Again, this machine is rated at three millimeters, so I was already pushing it well beyond the specs, but it actually kind of worked. I have no doubt that it would have worked completely with a three millimeter piece with less burning. The next thing I wanted to try and was very excited about was engraving stainless steel. As my subscribers know, I have the Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine that uses stainless steel parts. I wanted to see if I could engrave something on them. I first used a black sharpie on the surface to make sure the laser didn't bounce off while engraving. I then ran a simple outline of text on the part in one pass. I then used 91% alcohol on the part to remove the marker and here's what I was left with. Laser engraved stainless steel. It turned out great. The last cut I did was of a picture I took of the Eiffel Tower. I ran the photo through the software and did my engraving on a piece of bamboo cutting board. The image came out okay, but I feel like this is more of an issue with using bamboo with the plywood settings, as those have different properties. I chalked this one up to user error, and I look forward to many more tests of many other materials in the future. So finally, would I recommend this machine? The answer is yes, I would absolutely recommend this machine. To be honest, I was a little terrified of using a laser, but it ended up being really fun. I have already been thinking of ways to tinker with the machine with adding a shield to the laser, as well as an air assist. I have already started cutting up an extra pair of glasses I had for the window. I will post an STL to a design if I ever get around to finishing it. I also need to figure out a better system for ventilation since this machine and all laser machines need a way to vent smoke and potentially harmful gases away from your work area. Made the Best was also kind enough to send me a Y-axis rotary roller for the Otour for engraving cylindrical objects. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing a video of that working as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos dealing with laser engraving, CNC, 3D printing, injection molding, and all other things 3D. Till next time, goodbye.